our word of the week, lexicon. Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Entrepreneurial Family Man Podcast. I am Chris Niemeyer here with my good friends, Jamie Slingerland, Michael McGreevy, and Chris McCluskey. We are just four guys who are crazy about our wives. We love our kids and we want to thrive in business. And that's what this podcast is all about is, is balancing and integrating those things that are most important to us, not sacrificing our loved ones at the, at the sake of our business. And so today we're celebrating 2019. It's January 1st. And we want to just take a look back in time of 2018 and celebrate some things. We're, we're hitting 50 plus episodes now and just want to take a pause before we run intentionally into the new year to talk about some of the things we can celebrate in this past year. So as we look at that through the lens of EFM, our businesses, our enterprise, our family and fatherhood, and, and then our marriage, what are some things that we accomplished and are, are we most proud of? So guys, I want to just say this right up front. I am excited about this conversation because we each have so much to look back on with, with just a, a happy heart. And I know for me personally, I, I shared this earlier, but I think it's a large part due to each of you and your influence and the mindset and the growth that we're getting to experience each and every week talking through this together. So I'm going to start off by just a big group hug and saying thank you because it's been a good year for all of us. <laughs> I'm leaning in virtually, Nehemiah. I can feel the digital warmth. Yeah. <laughs> I just kissed yeah. you on the cheek. You don't even know that. <laughs> <laughs> 50, 50 episodes. episodes. For real? We've had 50 of these conversations together. I mean, that's pretty incredible. Oh, uh, we, we've actually had a lot more than that. These are just the ones I've actually made it to public. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, they say that time flies while you're having fun. And we had some work in there, I'll have to admit, where it felt a little bit like a grind. And then we had some episodes that were just poetry in motion, where we were almost giddy just because we loved the conversations that we were having. And it was authentic because we. We really believe in what we're talking about. Poetry in motion. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> but we did have some episodes that worked a little better than others did. And when we do catch that slipstream of the same spirit that we all hold to, it is like we complete each other's sentences. And that's really, really fun. And we can go from eighth grade Jamie language to postgraduate McCluskey's language. In, in <laughs> In 30 seconds, it's like 20 grade levels right there in the vocabulary that we use here at EFM. Absolutely. I could throw in the, some contractor lingo <laughs> myself, and then uh, Nehemiah cleans it up with some world domination. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you listen to this podcast, sometimes you have to have a dictionary nearby. You're either checking if Jamie's word is actually in the dictionary, and then you're trying to figure out what the word is that Chris just used. <laughs> so... <laughs> I love it. But seriously, let's let's dig into this and just look, take a look back. I mean, there's so much about this year that's happened in each of our lives. And uh, gosh, who, who who wants to start? McGreevy, you, you've had a pretty big year. You, you started with uh, how many in your family and how many do you have now? Yeah, we added somebody into our family. And honestly, I thought it would just be like adding another kid the first time. Yeah, it's just another person in the house. They don't eat much. It's all good. This was kind of the threshold for the McGreevy family. It pushed us beyond what we thought it would, actually. And it led to, to me having to, to really grow through some things. Um, I work from home here, and so uh, I had to figure out our new normal. How are we going to draw boundaries between my work time and my family time? And what do I do about the added noise? And there's just a lot to figure out. But it was good. Like It was one of those difficult things, those hard things that caused Lydia and I to have to dig deeper and figure out how are we going to move forward from here. So I'm actually grateful for that transition. And we get another little guy around the house, and he's such an awesome kid, and I can't wait to see how he grows up and who he becomes. Well, and I'm right there with you, except we added a newbie to the McCluskey family here, and it was a grandbaby. What a big year this yeah, was for us. Yeah. Rachel and I stepping across that threshold 
Uh, it's just a tremendous blessing. It's also very surreal. I cannot get used to the concept of being a granddad, but so I am. And, and that's a great thing. And by the way, that's my name. Now, I'm not grandpa. I'm granddad because in my, in my lexicon, being a dad was the greatest title I could imagine ever being blessed to carry. And so if there's anything better than dad, I guess it's granddad, but <laughs> no gramps here for me or, or anything else. I, yeah, what a year to celebrate becoming a grandfather. Don't go <laughs> draconian on us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's the quintessential name for it. <laughs> McCloskey, I cannot imagine the feeling of becoming a grandpa. How cool is that, man? We are just pumped for you. Granddad, there's a new cool title right there. Grandpa. Jamie, what about you, man? This year has been more adventure for your family than probably ever before. And let's face it, you're always adventuring. But what, what's that look like for your family this year? Well, we've taken a, several trips internationally. We did The kids did language school in Mexico. They've really hit their stride with the language study. They have a tutor from Venezuela. All the travel that we've done through Latin America, I think the fire has been caught for my kids, which is really exciting for me because there's an excuse to do more travel. <laughs> they so, got the um, travel bug. I'm the personality that I almost forget what has happened because I'm just so moving forward at such a fast pace. It was a big upper limit for me in 2017 to be able to take my business and travel to Mexico and still have it running. I've just hit a stride where we can leave for three and four weeks and still keep the lights on. So we've kind of acclimated to that and now we're moving forward. So we're, we're, we're actually on a hiatus from travel because we've done so much of it. So that's, <laughs> that's a great thing. We're always in flux here. So yeah. Nehemiah, well, you've had quite the year too. Uh, tell us a little bit about what your 2018 was like. Well, I, I was going to say, Chris, you, you got to tell us, he, he's talking about taking a hiatus from travel. No, you're the dude who's taking a hiatus from travel. <laughs> oh, man, this has been, yeah, it's been quite a year. So I, I pushed back really hard from running my, my first company, Mission Travel, and it gave us just a lot of breathing room to take a chance to really reflect, take stock of, of who we are as a, as a couple, as a family, some of our core you know, values. March was a pretty pivotal year. We had some deep conversations, Alicia and I, about just our, our longing, some goals, some, some things. And that led to a pretty quick discussion and decision to move, uproot our family cross country from little Oregon, small, beautiful little town uh, where we, you know, we knew people and everything. But we just decided, you know what? We are ready for adventure we are longing for certain types of climate and we're just sort of geared for that. Our kids like Jamie's are just up for adventure all the time and they've never met a beach they didn't like. So it's a good fit there, but it forced us to really take stock of what we wanted. And yeah, we threw a house up for sale. We sold it before we had a place to move into. We were scrambling to figure out what that was going to be like out here in St. Petersburg, Florida. And we've landed and we're still on our feet. It's been quite a year. One of just rich memories and, and blessings along the way. After several months of traveling, right? You, you guys did the ultimate couch surfing <laughs> adventure. Yeah. So in between some of that, we actually, we actually took off about uh, nine weeks where we just couch surfed and visited friends and family and relatives and all kinds of stuff from, from Palm Springs and San Diego down to Southern California up to... British Columbia and and Seattle and out to Hawaii and man that was I mean looking at the the family component of of EFM that was a rich time to just invest in each other and, and our kids and get to see new things and new experiences through through their eyes so I wouldn't trade that for the world I think we were we kind of averaged about a little over a week a month this year of of you know being gone or traveling so it was quite a year for us so, Michael, I got to move back into another area we talk about here, and that is, okay, so you had this kid, right? You're adding to that, and there's craziness there. That didn't stop you from living this kind of EFM lifestyle, and your business is growing. You're traveling with these kids as well. 
and this young family. I mean, you guys hopped on planes probably more this year than you have in past years with a newborn. What was that about? <laughs> it was crazy. I, I think we've just always committed that from the, out of the gates, no matter how many kids we have, they're going to get used to flying right away. Lydia's parents are in um, either Texas or Florida. And so we knew we wanted to see them regularly. So we're just going to take the kids along with us and they're going to figure out what it's like on the plane. And some of the people around us are just going to have to deal with the screaming <laughs> baby sometimes. So we never, we, we just decided together that we're never going to let our kids stop us from going where we want to go. And that meant doing a whole lot of traveling this earlier this year. And we just recently got back from Atlanta where we spent t 10 days down there for Thanksgiving. And I also worked down there as well while I was there. I'm like, Jamie, I, I forget the places that I went because it seems like sometimes it seems like it was either two years ago or last month. I can't remember, <laughs> but uh, I feel like we took several trips with the entire family this year. It was great. It's awesome. But now the kids who are a little bit older, they can't wait to get on the plane. They can't wait to take the train that takes them from the one terminal to the next one. And they're talking to the pilots and the pilots are handing them little uh, pins and saying, you're my assistant pilot today. And it's just like a become a fun experience for us. And we're willing to deal with just the craziness of it all because it's worth it. I'm thinking also about how we lived an adventure together in person at all these crazy places. So I don't know if you guys, we haven't even done an inventory of this. We almost recorded in Paris when I was there with Cecilia, but we recorded together without McCluskey in San Diego at our hotel room. And then me and Niemeyer were on a balcony in a condo in St. Petersburg recording with McGreevy and McCluskey. And then we were all deputized as comrades on the balcony <laughs> In Cuba, smoking cigars. I'm glad you said comrades, not communists. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in <Yeah>. Cuba. <laughs> Talking about entrepreneurship in a communistic country. I don't know if we'd have to edit that out if Fidel is, Fidel's God rest his soul, but the other <laughs> administration is listening. And then I was in Mexico in the mountains recording podcasts with you guys. McCluskey's always in the mountains recording podcasts. Where in the world are these EFM guys? We're always doing something. And this year... We got to do it together, and three of the four of us are going to be on a boat and a dock in Mexico on the Grand Cayman Islands in a couple of weeks from now, and it is so much fun, not only doing it with my family, but finally I have a group of guys that I can go and do this with, and that is so sweet. Absolutely. It's living this lifestyle, right? And I think that's part of this whole thing is that we're helping each other do this more intentionally. We're having the conversations of, okay, if we're going to do this, what needs to change or adapt in, in our business? What kind of conversations do we have to prep our, our wives when it comes to this? How are all, our kids going to react? So it, it's all so integrated. And I, I love the beauty of that. Jamie, I want to turn to you because you mentioned this earlier, but you guys traveled so much and, and then right now you're kind of home for a breather. You've taken some inventory about what that could look like for you going forward. And in building your Airbnb empire this, this coming year. Talk, talk with us a little bit about how is that going to change in terms of getting you guys a, a launch pad to go from and still getting to monetize all that you're doing. Ruthie and I have realized, very similar to, to you guys with your families, we love hosting and having people around. And just having to leave and clean our 3,000 square foot house and get it ready. Like every time we go on one of these trips that's basically paid for because somebody's staying at our house, our house is clean as a whistle. We have professional cleaners come in. We could, we could do an open house and it would look like we were selling our house because every window is clean. So it's just, it's really funny that it's going to be an iteration in our business by removing that one step that we're going to have an Airbnb that's a separate unit here. And that's just who we are. And I know McGreevy is getting the, I guess he's caught the bug because we're all so involved. Like we all have visions of having other real estate where people can stay. I know McCluskey's a landlord and so is Niemeyer. And me and McGreevy have done that before with multi-units. But we're just ready to grow our business and businesses in ways that is ever evolving. and. To me, that 
some people might be stressed out about that. For for me, it puts a big smile on my face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's allowing you guys to do so much. So yeah. McCluskey, since you mentioned it, right? So we're uh, <laughs> let's let's call ourselves grand lords, kind of like the granddad thing, but we'll, hey, we'll be grand lords. Except <laughs> slum lords. <laughs> That's right. We're not slum lords, you know, but we're land barons, right? <laughs> You had this major thing for you and Rachel and becoming grandparents for the first time and just the beauty that that had with your family. And then in this other domain, you're continuing to accumulate and and acquire and build a a real estate portfolio for yourself. And it's, it's allowing more to be done with your kids and launch them. So, man, talk, talk a little bit about that. What's that been like for you this year? (laughs) It's, it's actually kind of surreal. Uh, Like, like becoming a grandparent is a little surreal. Uh, We wrapped up the previous year, having closed on, as you guys know, an old church property, Civil War era church here, very cool building, about 10,000 square feet, got a lot of classic architecture to it and all, but that's how we rolled into the year of 2018 was like, oh my gosh, we, we have this building now to steward. And of course, we were launching a small business incubator in that, but we figured, okay, so that's going to take a lot of our time and attention. And by February of this year, we were closing on a whole other series of properties that are on the same block, caddy corner to that church. It's a wonderful Victorian house where our daughter and son-in-law and that grandbaby are living. And there's five tiny houses that surround it, little cottages, each of them just 400 square feet, perfect Airbnb kind of a place or small business or whatever we decide to do with those little properties. And here we are wrapping up the year now, having just placed a bid on another property. It's a quadplex that's on the corner the connecting those two. So it's kind of like a little monopoly board there. Yeah. That was not the vision going into the year. It evolved as we believe God just kind of opened our eyes to what could be and what was the bigger vision of what he was doing with that small business incubator. But yeah, wow. Very, very surreal. Very exciting. You lapped, you lapped the board a couple of times, collected your $200, just kept on acquiring, huh? <laughs> McCluskey, I'm hearing rumors that some of your, some of your boys are catching the vision for, for property and expanding their territory as well. That's exciting. Isn't that cool? Yeah. In this case, particularly our son, Drew, he saw what was going on and he actually went and took one of his college courses as a course in real estate. And uh, he did a lot of the research for us at the courthouse. We were looking at doing a a buy together and instead it worked better to do it as two individual people. But yeah, he's, I'll be very surprised if this coming calendar year of 2019 now, if he doesn't close out the year having a property of his own. Neat when they catch the bug like that. It makes it very lucrative if you have like 30 people on call that can just come in and fix up the property too. Like we've seen some pictures of, all the McCluskey kids like, oh, let's just go paint that house in 20 minutes because there's 50 of us. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> that is cool. And it's, it's cool to hear how your kids are, are catching that, right? And we talk on this show a lot about just teaching versus catching and how the kids are, are catching what dad is doing. They're, they're pressing into the life that you're living. They're seeing it and they're catching that vision and applying it to their own life. So well done. Uh, I'll tell you what, I love the conversations that happen around dinner tables or when we're just hanging out together in the living room and all. I mean, they're adults now. Not all of our kids are, but, but many of them. To hear your own children talk about things at the level of an adult, that, that's kind of unusual for us as parents. We're so used to talking down to kids and meeting them at their level. When they're adults, it's different. But you know, they caught your heart because they were raised by you and your wife. And so they're actually feeding back to you Ways of thinking outside the box that challenge and stretch us now. It's thrilling. That is thrilling to see how they're growing into their own, their own true self. Yeah. Based on what we talked about and looking back at 2018, what's one thing you learned about yourself? Being around you guys, I've just seen these gaps where I had in my mind plateaued in some areas. And I was kind of looking around and like, oh, what's the next thing for me to do in my business or what's the next thing to do in, in my family? And I think some of these gaps have just smacked me in the face because of seeing you guys, just some of your strengths and some of your giftedness of how you interact with your wives and the type of things that you guys do with your children around bedtime and story reading, McCluskey doing his silly voices with all the kids' books. And there's just... 
so much room to improve constantly and grow. And I love that. And I've seen some of those gaps and I'm stretching because I'm being around you guys. And it's really true that iron sharpens iron. That's good, man. We see that. We see that in you. I know this is a a place we're all getting to learn from and and grow with each other. Hmm. Yeah, I'll jump in. I, I think being around you guys and being a part of this group this past year has almost given me this deep level of permission to just be me and not try to strive to be somebody else that I see out there. So it's really like an, an acceptance of, we, t- we call it weirdness, right? That after watching that JP Sears video, but I'm, I'm embracing some of my weirdness and, and just owning it. And I feel like the trust that we've built here has allowed me to do that. And I'm super grateful for it. So thanks guys. Well, we love you for who you are and who you're becoming, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be a part of a group of normal people. I want to hang out with other weirdos like me. <laughs> <laughs> We're cool being abnormal. Uh, that's really hard to think about a specific thing. But one of the things that comes to mind is that for whatever reason, for a lot of my life, you know how we all have recurring dreams at night, or at least most people do that. that just a dream that comes back. Maybe it makes tons of sense to you, or maybe it's scary, or, or maybe it just like, makes no sense whatsoever. I have a recurring dream that I've had almost all of my life of being in a really old Victorian style house. It's a three story house, and I'm just I'm I'm repairing it. I'm just reclaiming and repairing this old house. Now it does not look like the Victorian, by the way, that we just bought. Uh, it 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 doesn't look like any building that we've ever bought, and I, I'm not sure that it ever would. It, it's apparently some kind of a symbol in my psyche or something. But one of the things that I've discovered more solidly this year is how greatly I enjoy reclaiming, um, call them old things. This farm that we live on, you know, we've been here for 20 years. It was an absolute mess when we came here. Unbelievable amounts of just demolition that I had to do to old buildings and repairing of others with Amish crews on the barns and reclaiming of the fields and getting rid of 50 some odd tires and car parts and trucks and combines, reclaiming, restoring and beautifying things apparently is a really strong theme that, that my soul just loves. So naturally this old civil war era church, the, the Victorian, the little tiny cottages, this other building, I, I'm loving that. I bought another used car. You guys have joked on here about my, my Porsche that I bought a couple years ago and how much fun I have in that. It's, it's, it's not quite yet a classic, but it's, it's getting close. It's coming up on its 20 years of, uh, well, actually, it is 20 years old now. Um, and I just absolutely love that. But I bought a Jaguar this year. And I'm talking a cheap, 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 dirt cheap uh, Jaguar, 2000 or 2001. But I have just enjoyed restoring parts of the beauty of that piece of, of drivable art. So if it's architecture or it's land, or it's vehicles. I mean, you got to have a vehicle, right? That car cost me three thousand five hundred dollars. That, that's that's nothing, right? But I have so much fun when I'm just messing with repairing something or driving it. And and so, anyway, that's a discovery about me that I'm not sure I was ever able to put my finger on, other than in those dreams. And this year, it's just been continually hitting me in the face in my waking state. Chris, you love this. Well, it's fun, wow. anyway. That is cool. I, I'm hearing that there's like a sermon in there, but, but, but seriously, I, there's something that I just caught there is that God makes all things new and he restores the old. And I think there's something there in, in your spirit where God's put something in you to, to see restoration. So that's pretty cool, Chris. I love that. Wow. Yeah, I'll, I'll receive that. You're right. There might be a sermon in there of message. That's cool, Chris. The McCluskeys leave things way better than they find them. You guys are just a people that you could take a piece of junk and turn it into a treasure. I mean, that's, that's, you're not taking junk, but it's just, it's in the heart of men, especially it's that creativity piece that you're talking about. And me and McGreevy have been jumping on these calls, dreaming about real estate. And I'm living vicariously through him as he looks at these properties that are all junky and when <laughs> McGreevy goes and looks at this property with his realtor and he calls me back talking about what it could look like if he, if he puts his McCluskey on it. 
<laughs> like McCluskey eyes it. Take that piece of junk and turn it into Make a, it a beautiful Victorian. Like going back, almost like it's a wonderful life. What um, what Mrs. Bailey did with that rundown house with the water coming down. Oh, yep. I love that. Brings it back to full glory. The old Granville place. Yeah. Yeah, if he can do that with me, he can do it with an old house. Mm -hmm. That's a good word right there. Well, I'll tell you, for me, it's been, there's some of the themes that came out and what you shared is is true and just being around you and catching and growing together. But I, I think one thing for me is I've realized I have more capacity to accept change than I thought I did. And in a lot of areas of my life and, you know, moving across country was certainly a significant one, but I think I've been a pretty rigid kind of guy. It's very structured and methodical and such. And there's, there's beauty in that. There's, there's okay the things we need to apply that to, but um, being able to change and to adapt to new situations, new settings, new ways of doing things, um, hearing how you guys each get to do life with your, with your wife and your kids uh, has really challenged me. So that's been something this year. I'm, I'm really looking back on fondly. Wow. Have you ever lived that out this year, Nehemiah? No one would have any idea about that um, being a part of you the way that you've lived. It's been awesome to watch. It's been awesome to have you up here in Buffalo to try Buffalo wings and see your whole clan in action. <laughs> but man, you are really leading well and, and being flexible and, and making the best of, of those situations. Well, thank you. Like we said, it's it's this part of the, just the beauty and the power of this group and, and all these guys that we get to pour life into through this EFM community is just sharing in our struggles, sharing in our wins and celebrating along the way, learning from one another. So I just ask you, what, what happened in 2018 in your life? You know, again, this is coming out New Year's Day. There's a whole new year to look forward to, but before you jump in, Look back at this past year. Take a look at your calendar. What are some highlights? What are some things you can celebrate along the way? And then move into this next year more intentionally about how you want to grow, where you want to grow, and who you want to grow with. Thank you for listening to the Entrepreneurial Family Man Podcast. Visit EFMLife.com to connect with us and others like you who are pursuing success in enterprise, family, and marriage.